Um, what I would like you now to do in group is to think about our mind, our brain, and we have all these life-threatening events. What I would like you to, to, to think is how does the brain know, how do we know, how does the brain know when is this event is stressful or relaxing? And what, do, what does the brain kind of, think about the brain as like your antivirus, yes, in your computer. It scans the situation. It tries to make sense of the situation. What, do the, what does the brain look to flag, okay, this is stress? Then after that, we need to see how does the body prepare ourselves to this stress. But first, how do you flag this? Ooh, ooh, danger, dangerous. What's the questions that the brain asks itself to qualify something as stressful or as relaxing event? Very, very important question, okay? In group, I'll give you five minutes, go for it. So, what, what we're trying to do now is to find the purpose of stress. <coughs> it may look, you know, normal or, or easy to find, but what's the purpose of nature create this function in our body that we call stress? And then we look at relaxation, why relaxation is important. If if we have that, it means, and all animals do have the same response, it's called stress response, a response to a stressful event, it means that actually it's very beneficial to have it. Otherwise, nature wouldn't spend energy. And we'll see that um, stress actually spends a lot of energy, but it's also vital. So why stress? It's it's much like having uh, pain receptors. It's your brain way of telling you something's not right. So it, um, yes, okay, you're right. Yeah. So uh, so assess the environment. Yeah. 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 This is not a good one. Um, I miss in this sentence something. It assess environment, but it assess the environment all the time. We all the time assess the environment. I'm not stressed right now. I'm still assessing the environment. So what is it assessing the environment for? Danger. Sorry? Danger. Danger. Yes. Something that's life threatening. Danger. So. Uh, yeah? So, anything else? Danger? Yeah? So, if you would be like the brain, <coughs> what would qualify you to say, ooh, stress? You, you, you kind of like, imagine that you're the brain and you have a button there in the brain. And when you press on the red button, something happens in the body that kind of prepares you for stress. So when are you pressing this button? When it's danger, yeah? Mm -hmm. So based on experiences, memories, instincts. We were just thinking, yeah. how do you recognize um, it's a danger? So, so how do you do that? Sometimes you're very aware right. that you find it stressful or there is a danger. Sometimes you're less aware that there is a threat or a danger because your brain is protecting you maybe from a past experience that's okay. not particularly relevant sure. um, or life-threatening necessarily. So, so you, you're talking about really the, the brain past, is it? Yeah, it kind of felt like it was just all happening at once because mm -hmm. you know, you've got this sensory thing, someone's staring mm -hmm. at me, or it's dark, or there's these right. people, or yeah. you know, all these kind of things coming right. in, and then your brain can go, um, oh, look, the police are over there, everything's fine. Or it could go, there's danger, you could be attacked, and it prepares the body for it action. to you in the back, the experience, yeah. what you said yeah. in the yeah. So, so, so it's, it's, it's something that you need to have kind of a past memory about it to compare it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To some extent, yeah. but also your experiences are being brought up and what is a nice look. Okay. You know, you can see if someone's looking at you aggressively, you can tell that. That's, um, 
you know, it might not always be warranted, and that person okay. might not necessarily do it with you, but you can tell a friendly look sure. or not a friendly look. So you have the past experience, mm -hmm. this is first, and you have your personality also, yeah? And they kind of relate together. Sometimes, um, exam, it's, we agree that it's not really life-threatening, but for some people, because of maybe their past experience and personality, it might be a lot more than other people. Yeah? Cool. We also associate with other things. So, for example, with work, say, for example, we can't yep. make a deadline. Yep. From past experience, we might lead to deadline, might, yeah. Yeah. might not lead to a pay raise, and the pay raise might not be able to meet the future. So, so anticipation. Anticipation, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, interesting, isn't it? So, we are human, we have that ability to think about the future. Sometimes we, meet, we go too far. It's very interesting that hap it happens a lot in the news, in the media. You know, we're bombarded by events that we anticipate would have some effect to us. Yeah. How many people are afraid of, say, terrorism? Yeah. A lot of us. <laughs> yeah. But actually, there are very, very, very few people who are actually affected by terrorism. We're more affected on trivial things like electricity at home. Yeah, <laughs> electricity at home or other events that actually um, uh, road traffic accidents. Yeah. We had experience with them, so for us it's more stressful. Yes. We didn't have experience with uh, terrorism. Yes. yes. We just heard about it, and yeah. so it's not that. that so, so sometimes the hidden stuff is is play a bigger role in our life. Yeah. Okay. One more thing is missing here. Remember that life-threatening events, a lot of it was psychological. So the brain looked for danger, but what kind of danger? Physical danger. Physical danger. Can you give an example of physical dangers? Sorry? If I punched you. Yeah, fighting. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you <can't be> <laughs> <laughs> okay. And? Fall. If you fall. Falling, mm -hmm. yeah. Fell or accidents, yeah. Wild animals. In an animal. Tiger. animal. Tiger. Yeah. In front of you. A shock. Yes. <laughs> uh, shock can be physical. It is actually shock is a state of a state of shock is physical. Your blood pressure drops, <coughs> you kind of completely blurred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other things are road traffic accidents and um, even cold. Being cold, being hungry, being ill. These are all physical uh, manifestation of danger. When you're hungry, your body will take it as a, a stressful event. Yeah. So this is first one. Can you imagine what's the second one? Mental. Mental? I would say mental, social. And that is something that we underlook. We don't understand the strength of um, social stress. I mean, we see it very much, but I think in courses, and in, in the book also, you, you go to the book, I'm not sure if it, it, it mentioned that. Yeah. Um, so these two are causing more stress. Again, this is a real threat. This is a parent threat, threat, but is as important as this one, as physical, because we are social creatures. And for us to be excluded, it's almost like being dead. Right, so what we've learned? We've learned that there is a little man in our brain, or little woman, or little them, little creature in our brain, that um, assess the environment all the time. 
and they look for signs of danger. The danger can be physical or mental, social. Yeah. Once um, this little creature find a real or apparent, it doesn't have to be real. Maybe there is an alarm. You might not know if it's a real or not, but it would press on the alarm button that we call stress. Now, how does this little creature um, know about the danger? Uh, it's based on their past experience. It's based on the personality, anticipation, and many environmental and personal situations that occurs. Sometimes also there is a summation. Let's say if you are hungry and you have a, um, a verbal confrontation with someone, it will get a lot worse because it's one plus one equals three or seven sometimes, yeah? So sometimes things are not, um, you have to look at the person as a whole, you know? Sometimes it's interesting, you see children like um, sometimes their behavior change and only the, you stick something to eat and they're fine <laughs> they were just hungry <laughs> and they respond in a, in, a, in, a, in a kind of stressful way to an event that usually you know them they, they will be fine okay so, so I yes question. please yes where would instincts go because you have the past experience but I, sometimes you react to something okay Without having past experience, but you know it's danger. Yes. It's very primal. Yes. Thing, um, I think they are reflexes. They are more imprinted in our DNA. Yeah. Uh, but oh, but think think about. Give an example of, of, of an instinct. Like you see a tiger. Okay. You haven't had experience before, but sure. you still run away from it. If you hear that, then you hear them. Mm -hmm. You hear them. Mm -hmm. Actually, a baby with no past experience, would not be afraid of a tiger. Well, that's interesting because I had different experiences with my son. I already okay. told the story. Um, okay. He was like nine months old. Yes. My husband made a hissing noise, okay. like a snake thing, and okay. he really jumped away and, okay. moved, and right. didn't move at all. So, so he here you are. Know. We have an imprint of, 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 uh, of uh, a sound that probably were more... Um, more f more familiar or more um, it basically it raises an alarm. This this creature that there it has some built-in stuff that it, it, since we since we um, get um, since we born probably. There's fear of the unknown yeah. in young children. Definitely because that's how yep. they help to learn. So if there's something unknown mm. and they don't know how to react to it, mm. they cry for mama to yep. come and explain it basically. So remember this little creature, it's very important.